started. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this week's reading of A Tale of Two Cities. Uh, it's personally one of my favorites. I hope that if you've read it before, uh, maybe this time around you found something new. Uh, let's go ahead and jump right in. I kind of want you guys to lead the section this time. So if anyone has, I don't know, a passage that really uh, left out to them or maybe a question they want to raise to the group, uh, just go ahead. start by addressing the darker themes in the second half of the novel. Right. Yeah. Um, this might not be what you're looking for, but just I got the sense while I was reading that the latter half was really like, it was really different from the first half thematically. Like the first half I thought was a lot lighter and the second half was like really lacking that. Yeah, yeah, uh, for sure. Does someone maybe want to elaborate on that point a little bit? Yeah, um, going off what she said, I just, uh, for me at least, I think there was a shift in themes throughout the novel. Um, like there was definitely a change. Okay, yes. Yes, for sure. Uh, let's maybe uh, talk about social classes and how they impact the novel. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think that one thing uh, people often overlook when they talk about social class in the context of the novel is that there are two cities. Like, it's one thing to look at social class in the context of one city, but it's quite different when there are two. Yeah, I just want to jump off of, um, I'm sorry, what's your name? Sean. Jumping off what Sean said, I think that two cities might have been a little bit indulgent, you know? A tale of one city would have been just fine. I was, I was pretty much going to say the same thing. I feel we're getting a little distracted here, so let's maybe uh, focus on the characters of the novel. I felt, and I may be way off here, but I found myself really connecting with the protagonist, and as the story went on, I really found some conflict with the antagonist. Can I just say something? And I might be reading way too much into this, um, but I really got the sense that at times it was the best of times, but then at others it the was- The worst of- sorry, did I interrupt? Oh no, that's what I was going to say. I was going to say it was the worst of times. Wait, that's just the first line. I think when the characters move from Chicago to New York, that's when the tone of the book really- Wait, those aren't even the two cities in the novel. Did, did any of you actually read this book? Just going off your comment about how it seems like none of us actually read the novel, uh, I just want to build on that. I really agree with the interpretation that it seems like none of us read it. Guys, guys stop, all right? This isn't what this is for. We, we come to sections so we can discuss the larger ideas of the novel together. Not that you can come in pretending you've read it and say a bunch of vague circular comments. Yeah, I just want to open this up to the group for a second. Does anybody else think that the comments lack a certain specificity? I really agree. I think that if we were to try to ascribe the comments to some sort of geometric shape, I think it would be like, very spherical. Um, or were they in two dimensions, uh, circular? Stop, this isn't productive. Everything you're saying just means nothing. Look, you're wasting my time, you're wasting your time, and above all else, you're wasting- I'm late. It's fine, it's fine. I, I bet you don't have any substantive things to say about the, the thematic change over the course of the novel. I was actually reading an essay online that tracked the progression of Dickens' writing structure over the course of his life, and I found an argument that said that A Tale of Two Cities is actually atypical because of its explicit dealings with political issues. Is that true? Uh, um, the, the, the thing that, that I find uh, really interesting about the uh, novel's atypicalness is, um, like, like you mentioned, the, the political uh, explicit nature uh, really brings a new level of um, uh, typicalness. 